Battleyes. There's no theme this week, so I think this is a perfect opportunity to talk about the Xbox One. So, two new consoles have been released recently, Microsoft's Xbox One and Sony's PlayStation 4. Now, I already have a problem there with the Microsoft product. The Xbox One. To the untrained eye of a normal consumer, they might believe that the Xbox One is somehow inferior to the PlayStation 4, because 1 and 4. I think that was a bit of a mistake on Microsoft's front. And that is the first of many mistakes that Microsoft have made recently. So I watched the Xbox One live announcement and I was excited to see the next generation of gaming. And maybe it would inspire me to get back into gaming. But it left me a bit disappointed. The whole announcement didn't seem that it was aimed at games at all. Which I think is a bad move considering the people who are likely to be watching this announcement are either gamers or people who are interested in games. Instead of a games console, Microsoft presented us with a set-top box that can switch between TV, movies, streaming and games really quickly. They talked about their deal with sports networks that d lets you do really cool things like make your dream team as you're watching the sports and that's an extremely cool feature however it is catered entirely to the american market in fact the whole watching tv through your xbox thing will only work in the us as of right now i'm sure international support will come but what about the people in the countries that don't have the same enthusiasm for more american sports what will make them want to utilise this? Have they planned any cool Dream Team stuff for like Asia, Australia, South America, Mainland Europe, Great Britain? Not that I'm aware of. If they have though, please do tell me in the comments. Or if I say something that might be factually wrong, please correct me with like links to prove that I am wrong down there because I like being proved wrong because it shows people are paying attention. Sticking with the TV road, they announced they're going to make a Halo TV series directed by Steven Spielberg. Great! But what does that have to do with your console? Is the show exclusive to the console? Are you telling me that I need to buy a $500 console just to watch this TV program? And if so, will I need an internet connection to watch it? Because Xbox boasted about its amazing internet capabilities. Skype, streaming, cloud storage, cloud computing. Sounds wonderful. But you'll need an Xbox Live subscription to utilise these. That's on top of any monthly fees you are paying for any service like Netflix or other streaming sites. That's right. Microsoft is asking you to pay a fee to access something that you're already paying a monthly fee to have. No thanks. During the announcement, Microsoft tried to make out like their new online features are integral to this new Xbox. Which led to the realisation that this new Xbox is always online. And that is, every 24 hours they connect to the internet and verify your games and stuff. If it can't connect, you know play. In fact, that alienates even more people. People with slow, unreliable, or no internet at all. Like developing countries, people in the countryside. Hell, even the military needs some time off. Microsoft also introduced a DRM that lets you install games from the disk onto your hard drive, but it also stops you from being able to trade games. You cannot resell your games later when you do not know when you no longer want them, and you cannot lend it to a friend. They did, however, give us a cool feature called family sharing, which lets you share a digital copy of the game between up to 10 of your family members. Good, I like that. Another thing that worried people was the Xbox Kinect, which ships with every Xbox One console. For those who don't know, the Kinect is a motion capture camera that's designed to enhance the gaming experience by introducing gestures and voice commands. But really, it was a gimmick only introduced so you could play dance and fitness games. Mainly because Nintendo had that market cornered with the Wii, which heavily relies on motion. Xbox was just trying to cash in. During the Xbox One's announcement, they showed the Kinect's new abilities, with gestures to control menus and screen management. This is actually really cool. It feels like a step closer to sci-fi, or at least Tony Stark's cool holographic grabby computer things. They also introduced new voice commands, letting you ask the Xbox to turn on or turn off and other things. What this does is eliminate your need to get up, walk over to the console and press the power button. It just lets you turn it on in the comfort of your own filth. I love technology. But I don't trust it. The Kinect's ability to know when you've asked it to turn on the Xbox shows that the Kinect is always listening, even when you're not using the console itself. That's creepy. And due to the nature of the always online thing, some people, including me, are a bit worried about hackers getting into the cameras and being able to watch us. Or at least Microsoft collecting data for targeted advertising using video recordings or voice recordings. People were 
that. But there was hope at E3, a big gaming conference, that we'd finally get some good news. More games, not just a short segment on the new first person shooter, which is the same as the old first person shooter, except now your character has a dog. Unfortunately for Microsoft, Sony had caught on to what people were saying about Microsoft's frankly stupid things they're doing with the Xbox One. Pretty much their entire pitch at E3 was, hey look, the PlayStation 4 is not the Xbox One. We're not being stupid and taking away consumer rights. We're not making anyone angry. We're totally works. Most people actually argue that Sony won E3. I tend to agree. Maybe it was their p***-taking of Microsoft with their game trading video. Maybe it was the fact that the PlayStation Move, Sony's equivalent of the Kinect, was optional and was not in fact integral to the system itself. Maybe it was the more open field for indie game developers. Maybe it was the $100 cheaper price tag. Maybe even it was the cool design reminiscent of the old brilliant PlayStation 2. Or maybe it was all of the above. All the while Microsoft desperately tried to avoid questions about things that the people didn't like. And when they did answer questions on the DRM or the always online feature that alienated so many people, the responses were often inconsistent and bumbling and they all tried to make it seem like these were very good things and important to the system. This was a PR disaster from Microsoft. Their attempts at introducing new things just to get themselves, let's be honest, more money had failed. People were lashing out, tweeting, blogging, making memes videos. And so, recently, Microsoft did something very drastic. A big goddamn U-turn. Getting rid of the stupid DRM and the 24-hour stupid checkup thing. Great! They listened to us, people say. But they didn't. What Microsoft did was they saw that the PlayStation 4 had more pre-orders. They saw it was doing better, and they realised they f up. And so, they pulled the plug. Even though the always online thing was one of my biggest problems with the Xbox, I still think they've made a big mistake by doing this. By doing this U-turn, Xbox has pretty much announced to everyone that they were wrong. A huge embarrassment. This probably will cost some customers when they look at how unstable this console seems to be at the moment. Another thing is that they've taken away some features that made the console actually quite attractive, like the installation of games and the family sharing thing. Those were two of the platform's pluses. What Microsoft should have done is made the installation of games optional. Therefore, once they install, they do the 24-hour check. But it's up to the console owner whether they want to do this. People with good internet connections who have no problem with this can do it. But then people with slower, more unreliable things or who are uncomfortable with doing this don't have to. In conclusion, I don't think I'll be buying either of these new consoles. But if I did, I'd buy the PlayStation 4. Mainly because of the indie market, the cheaper price tag and the lack of a HAL 9000 looking spy cam on top of my TV. If anything, I'll buy the Xbox 360 once the prices go down. Why? Because I've missed out on seven years worth of gaming and I like the Xbox's controller more than the PlayStation's. But in all honesty, I'll probably just get a USB Xbox controller for my PC. Thank you for watching. If you have any problems or opinions about what I just said, tell me about that. Sorry there wasn't a theme this week. We didn't get around to thinking of one. Okay, bye!